Alright gang, um, today this is going to be Violent Tordata Video Lesson 2 and we're going to start breaking down the classification of chordates and today we're going to focus primarily on fish and my goal is to try to get through all the fish but we may have to break this up into two so um, it, let's just see how it goes all right so let's not waste time looking at me let's start talking about fish so classification we are in phylum chordata and under phylum chordata there is a group which is technically uh, an extra level of the classification system that we don't uh, a lot of times really include when we start talking about the uh, categories of classification. But we have a group called protochordata, and these are some of your very early and primitive chordates. And under uh, phylum chordata would be the subphylum urochordata. Okay, these are the tunicates, which are also known as sea squirts. And when you see them, you'll think to yourself, how are they chordates? But I will explain. And then subphylum cephalochordata, which are your lancelets. And so these are the groups of animals. Go back to last week's uh, Flipgrid Friday. How can you, be, can you be a chordate without having uh, a vertebral column? These are the guys. These are the animals. They do not have a vertebral column. All right, they, they have a dorsal nerve cord and a notochord, but it is not encased in a spinal column. So, believe it or not, this is a chordate. Now, let me explain. This is called a C squirt. Um, they go through a change of life cycle where this is the adult. This is um, after the... Uh, offspring have uh, they they go through a metamorphosis where the quote unquote larval stage or embryonic stage is free swimming and it has the dorsal nerve cord and the notochord and it swims and finds a place it lands and then its body transforms or metamorphosizes into this adult form. So even though this looks like uh, a coral or a sponge, it's actually not. It's a tunicate, and it's called a sea squirt. It's very similar in, in function to what a sponge does and how a sponge lives. But if you look at its development, it is actually a chordate. So you and I are more closely related to this creature than we are to insects and an octopus or a snail. Um, if you trace back through the phylogenetic tree, this organism is a more close relative than any of the bugs and spiders and other crawly creatures that are out there. So, uh, interesting kind of thing to talk about. Next we have the lancelets, and you can see in this swimming organism Right through there is that notochord and dorsal nerve cord. So they are members of phylum chordata. Then we go to our group, subphylum vertebrata. These are the vertebrates. This is any organism that has their dorsal nerve cord surrounded by a vertebral column, which is where we get vertebrate, the vertebrae that in case surround and protect our dorsal nerve cord. That's what puts us in phylum vertebrata. This includes the bony or a cartilaginous vertebrae. So we talked about on lesson one, the sharks, they have a cartilaginous skeleton, but they form vertebrae that protects their spinal column and that gives them the spinal cord. And the first in that group is superclass agnatha. All right, these are the jawless fish. These are fish that, as their name would suggest, have no jaw. So let's take a look. This is a hagfish that is in class Mixinii, and it does not have a jaw. This is kind of, everyone would think it's an eel. It's actually not an eel. Uh, it's a hagfish. It looks like an eel, but it's, it is a jawless fish. And this lovely creature 
is in class Cephalospidomorphi, which is quite the mouthful. This is the lamprey, and as you can see, they don't have a jaw. They just have this large oral sucker that they use to attach to other fish. And then you can see all these teeth here. They use these teeth to then eat away at the tissue of the fish that they are on. But you can see uh, there are the gill slits. Um, you can see the eyeball there. So it does have bilateral symmetry. Um, and in there is a nerve cord supported by vertebrae. And then here are some of the classes that uh, have members that you are going to be more familiar with. So the group phylum chordata, we are in subphylum vertebrata, then superclass nathostomata. This includes all the jawed fishes, and all tetrapods. Now tetrapods are organisms with four legs and four appendages. Now you may be thinking we don't have four legs but we do have four um, appendages, two legs, two arms. And so uh, even though our mode of transportation is known as bipedal, which means we're up on two, we do have two other limbs so that would make us tetrapods. So the other groups or the classes that are grouped in superclass Nathostomata would be class Chondriichthys. These are the sharks, rays, skates, and the chimeras. They have a cartilaginous skeleton. Class Osteichthys. Oste means bone. These are the bony fish. So for you fishermen out there, uh, if, you're, uh, if you're a fan of bass fishing or catfish or uh, panfish such as bluegill and crappie, um, you are very familiar with members of class Osteichthys. Class Amphibia, which are going to be uh, no surprise to anyone, the amphibians. So that's going to be your frogs, toads, and salamanders. Class Reptilia are, are the reptiles, your snakes, turtles, tortoises, uh, lizards, and the crocodilians, the alligators and the crocodiles. And class AVs are the birds. So this, they fly. Birds are, you're flying, that's probably where with the word aviation comes from. As you can see, the root is the same. And then our class, where we would be grouped, class mammalia, and of course, those are the mammals. So um, we, um, hopefully we are uh, pretty aware what a mammal is, you know, warm-blooded, covered in hair, placental, uh, we nurse our young, all right? So let's move on down the line. Let's get into the fish, and we'll see if we can uh, get through this group. By definition, fish are gill-breathing, ectothermic, which means that's, that's the, the zoological term for cold-blooded. Um, you can't see, but I was doing air quotes around cold-blooded. Uh, means their body temperature changes with the environment. They are aquatic, they live in the water, they uh, a vertebrate, so they have a vertebral column that possesses fins and skin that is usually covered with scales. So usually covered with scales. There are exceptions to the rule. Catfish don't really have scales, uh, but they do. They are still considered fish. There are about 22,000 species. Uh, this is the largest group of all vertebrates. There are more fish uh, vertebrates than there are any other group of species. If you add them all together, uh, your fish are going to outnumber all the groups, which if you go, if you go back uh, and where scientists say that everything came out of the water, so clearly uh, evolved from uh, aquatic organisms here on planet Earth, so that means fish have been around longer than birds and mammals and reptiles, so it just kind of makes sense that they have a lot more species. So our first group is class Mixinii. These are the hagfish. And we had a picture of one up earlier. When we, this is a group of the, the jawless fish. There are only 32 species of hagfish. All are marine, so they're all found in the ocean, and all are scavengers. So they don't, they're not predators. They just clean up uh, the dead and decaying animals in the ocean. They feed on dead, uh, dead of dying fish, annelids, mollusks, and crustaceans. So not real picky. Uh, when it comes to their food. 
whether it's a fish, um, a, uh, a mollusk, or a crustacean. If it's dead and it's in the ocean, you're going to find hagfish around it. They are blind but are quickly attracted to food by smell. After attaching itself to prey, the tongue is thrust forward to rasp off pieces of tissue, similar to the way a snail would eat with its radula, if you remember that from the mollusk unit. They sometimes tie themselves into a knot at the tail and pass the knot forward for extra leverage when feeding. So that's one way they can push their body as they untie the knot, as they slide that knot of their body forward, it will then push against the body and allow them to uh, rip more tissue off of that dead and decaying animal. Next class is, and this is quite a mouthful, the cephalospinomorphi, which I don't know, that's kind of fun to say. So go ahead and pause the video and, and take a few minutes to say it over and over again. Uh, you, you'll enjoy it. So cephalospinomorphi, uh, there are about 40 species, but best known as the marine lamprey of the Great Lakes. They lack jaws and paired fins, so they just have a long body with the, the fin that runs along the spine and along the belly. They don't have the pectoral fins or the pelvic fins the way fish that we're familiar with have. And they also have a cartilaginous skeleton, meaning that they're, car they're skeleton made of cartilage and not bone. Uh, many parasitize other fish by using its oral disc to bore through the skin and feed on blood. And if we go... Uh, remember back to the lamprey that was the one that had that huge oral sucker with the, all those rows and rings of teeth there in the middle. So I went a little too far and the video lesson two is going to be divided into two sections which will be video lesson 2A and video lesson 2B. Alright so you've just finished 2A so you may move on and uh, go to find the rest of the lesson on the fish, which will be video lesson 2B. All right, and go watch that one. And then after you watch video lesson 2B, then you can go to Schoology and uh, go take your exit slip. All right, so good job on today's lesson, and now head on over and watch the next video.